Good afternoon and welcome. Today's webinar, Build Your Practice in the Cloud, is hosted by the ABA Legal Technology Resource Center. Uh, speaking today will be Ron Collins from Amicus Attorney. Uh, the Legal Technology Resource Center is an ABA member benefit that's provided by the Law Practice Management section of the ABA. The LTRC has been providing lawyers with legal technology guidance and information uh, and help for more than 25 years now. Uh, you can find a wide variety of legal technology resources, guides, articles, comparison charts, uh, and videos on our website at www.lawtechnology.org. Ron Collins is the president and founder of Gavel and Gown Software, uh, the makers of Amicus Attorney. Ron is an experienced lawyer. He's a fellow of the College of Law Practice Management and a past director of the Canadian Society for the Advancement of Legal Technology. Thank you all for joining us. Ron, go ahead. Thanks, Josh, and thank you, everyone, for attending. We have a really important subject today. There's a lot to get into, so I'm going to get right into it. Uh, we're speaking about practice management and practicing law on the cloud. I think by now everyone's familiar with the cloud. It's certainly a buzzword that's in the news almost every day. But as with all buzzwords, the more they get used, sometimes more confusion can arise about them in terms of what they really mean. Simply put, practicing law with a cloud-based application means using internet-based computing. It means storing some or all of your practice data in an internet-based server. In other words, not a computer or server which is in your office or on your premises, but somewhere at an internet service provider or data hosting center run by someone else and accessible from anywhere that you have internet access. Cloud applications are used for communication, data storage, and they're typically made available to you as a service, meaning that all of the support and running of the application is done for you and you pay on a monthly subscription basis. Typically, but not always, cloud applications are made available to you through a browser, so all you need to use them is a PC or other computing device with a web browser. You may think that this sounds like science fiction, that this is futuristic. In fact, right now, I'm willing to bet almost everyone listening to this broadcast today is already using one or more cloud solutions. Some of the very well-known ones out there are things like Office 365, Google Apps, iCloud. If you have a Mac or an iPad or an iPhone that are coordinating through iCloud, you're using the cloud. Gmail or Hotmail, those are cloud applications. Skype, Dropbox, Evernote, Facebook, so many more applications like that are cloud-based applications. Some of them are free. Some of them you pay low monthly fees for. They're all cloud-based computing where your data is being stored in the application run and the internet, you use your browser. It's a simple, very effective uh, approach to computing. All right, so why do people bother with that? What is in it for you to be using the cloud? In other words, why are we having this session? Well, there's a lot of advantages to cloud-based computing. Firstly, you can use any computer anywhere. So by any computer, I mean not only your own laptop, I mean your home computer, your Macintosh, your PC, or any tablet if you have a Surface tablet, if you have an Android Galaxy tablet, if you have an iPad, and so many lawyers do, you can use any or all of them to access your information through the cloud. That portability, versatility, and most importantly, mobility of the cloud is probably its single greatest advantage. Next is that there's really nothing to install. Uh, you just log into a site, sign up, put in a name and address and a few details like that, and you're off and running with a cloud application. Instead of getting a disk, having to figure out a set of install instructions, worrying about whether you put things in the right directory, none of that is there. It's just log in and get going. Another advantage is that it's always up to date because by virtue of being subscription, instead of having to subscribe to pay for annual upgrades or whatever else. They're just updated periodically for you. And that's another key thing. They're always getting better. Developers of cloud applications are always working on them, always improving them, so that you just get the benefits of all of that work and regularly your cloud tool, whatever it may be, 
gets better and better. Another huge distinction is the cost, where uh, a desktop application might cost hundreds of dollars up front that you have to come up with right away to get it installed and get going. Cloud applications typically, as I said, they give you a free trial, and then it's a low monthly fee. For example, Amicus Cloud is just $35 a user a month. So for that very low entry fee, $35, you're up and running, which makes it a lot easier on your wallet as you go along. Another interesting thing about that is because it is a subscription fee, it's typically treated by most, most tax authorities as an expense, not a capital investment, which makes it effectively even lower cost to you in terms of the income statement of your business. Next benefit, and this one is probably one of the ones that appeals to lawyers and all of us non-techies the most, is the reduction in IT cost and most importantly, hassle. When Windows suddenly gives you all of these messages about this or that driver that you have to install or change, that's a pain. And most of us would rather practice law than struggle with Windows. With a cloud application, that's what you can do because everything is set up and done for you. In its current technology, it's not like you're using Windows XP or something from the past that you have to worry about getting up to date or is it going to be compatible with the latest things. Cloud applications, by virtue of the fact that they're always changing and always being improved by their developers, are always up to date with the latest tools so that when you get a new smartphone or a new tool of any kind, a new toy as well, it's going to be there for you and up to date. All that time is nothing to maintain. You don't have to be filing service tax. You don't have to be installing anything. You don't have to be supporting anything. You don't have to be worrying about hard disks that may or may not fail. It's all done for you. And to me, that's one of the biggest, biggest benefits. You're paying for that benefit, but it's so worth it, is that there's nothing to maintain. And if for any reason you have a question or something goes wrong, firstly, there's much less that can go wrong. But if you have that question, with most cloud applications, at least the paid ones, you have unlimited support and multiple ways in which you can get help with whatever you need. Next, backups are done for you. We all know, having practiced with computers now for many years, many decades at this stage, that if you fail to do a backup, you can be in big trouble. And so many lawyers that I speak to do find it hard to have a regular organized backup procedure. If you're using a cloud application, that worry goes at the window. The cloud service provider does it for you, which makes a cloud program so much more reliable. And that, in turn, leads to a pretty much stronger guarantee of business continuity. So for example, uh, one lawyer wrote to me just a couple of days ago about a situation in Texas a couple of years ago where there was a huge forest fire, some 24,000 acres of Texas. The biggest forest fire in Texas history happened, and all sorts of businesses got wiped out because not only did their computers melt down, but their backups were in the same area. If they were either in the same room or just down the street, and they all got wiped out, which effectively, if that's the way you were set up, um, would wipe you out. Or, of course, more recently, Hurricane Sandy and what happened there, it was a terrible natural disaster, but it can destroy a business and all your computer records, too. The great thing about a cloud application is that that can't happen because the computer database is not only backed up for you, it's in a remote, very secure and protected site. Um, and with the better cloud applications, in fact, it's in two different locations in completely different cities, geographical locations. So even if something horrible happened to the one data center, another one would be up and running and your business wouldn't miss a beat. That's a huge advantage of the cloud, all of which gives you great confidence that the tools you rely on to run your law practice are going to be there for you. So lots of really exciting things uh, that make the cloud attractive, but let's face it, not everything is a one-sided story. There are disadvantages as well. One of the most important things to recognize is that because cloud applications run in a browser, they have much smaller feature sets. Browsers just can't do as much as compiled code of applications that run on your desktop. So they, have, they do less for you, and the things they do for you are more limited. You have to work around what a browser can do. You can't just do whatever you want to. 
One of those limitations is that they typically lack customization capability because when you have your own on-premise software and database, you can customize that for your firm exactly the way you want to practice law. But when you're sharing an application over the Internet with thousands of other law firms, you can only customize much more limited aspects of it because one size has to almost fit all. Another big important distinction is that there are fewer integrations. Cloud applications run on a server in the cloud, and there's nothing else on that server but those applications. And there's nothing on your computer but your browser. That means if you're using other applications on your computer that you want to share information with or integrate with, it's very, very difficult for the cloud application vendor to make that happen. And so as a consequence, very few of them do. There's less automation in cloud applications. They're less capable of truly automating your practice so that you just push buttons and have things happen. They'll organize you, but they automate you less. They're also slower. I mean, how many people have a super fast internet connection? You're at the mercy of your internet connection, which as we all know is sometimes fast and sometimes slow. Um, and browsers themselves, because they're always interpreting code as they go along, they just inherently run slower and compiled applications on the desktop. So you're not going to find the same snap snap performance in a cloud application as you would on the desktop. Next, the great advantage of cloud applications in that you pay uh, as you go, and so it's a very small upfront application or price, um, also has a consequence. And that is that you have to keep paying. When you buy a desktop application, you pay once, and then if you don't want to, you don't have to pay again for a decade. But with a cloud application, you have to pay every month. And if you stop paying, it stops working. The consequence of which is that over time, and without question, cloud applications will be more expensive to you than a desktop application. Because you're paying not only for that application, you're paying for all its updates, all that unlimited service, and you're paying the cloud vendor to maintain it and run it for you. I think that that extra payment is very much worth the price because I don't want to be an IT guy. I don't want to have to maintain my own server, but recognize that it will be more expensive. It's just a cost that's worth spending. The last two issues are ones that we're going to talk about more here today, um, is that depending on the vendor, there is a real possibility of privacy or security issues when you put data in the cloud. And as lawyers, with your duties, that's really important. And there are other professional ethics issues around practicing law with data in the cloud. We're going to talk about those as well. So part of the theme of today's uh, presentation is practicing law in the cloud, and that means practice management software. One of the threshold questions then is, why do you need practice management software? There's another entire ABA session on this at the Law Practice Management section in their Legal Technology Resource Center. I'm sure you can go to that if you're interested. But basically, you have a better organized practice, more efficiencies, better teamwork. You're going to capture more billable time and typically make more money, be a more profitable law firm if you use practice management software. Last but not least, it reduces your risk so you sleep better at night. All right, let's talk about what is cloud practice management software. It handles both the professional side of your practice meaning things like your client matter files, and the business side, time and expenses, billing, collections, and trust. And then it has a variety of other related tools. So what I've done here is I've flipped into Amicus Cloud, which is a version of Amicus Attorney, which is a pure cloud software. And I'm going to use that as a quick example of what it does. So you can see from the top with my navigation bar, I'm running an Internet Explorer. I can see my email, client files, calendar, tasks, and so on. A wide variety of different tools all related to the practice of law. And then down here in the main screen, I have tiles that tell me about what's going on in my practice. I have an appointment remaining today later this afternoon. I have five calls to return. I have six unread emails. 16 tasks, two with deadlines today. I have some recent activities that don't have time entries. That's very interesting. So Amicus's approach is to be very helpful and proactive to you, not just be a passive repository of facts, but to proactively be your assistant and say, look, 
you'll have seven recent activities without time entries. And as you can see, when I put my mouse over it, it says, help me do these time entries. Or I have four files with unveiled width exceeding $1,000. If I put my mouse over it, it says, show me my width. Or five receivables more than 30 days old. These are all important things in my practice. That when I'm focusing on tomorrow's cross-examination, this afternoon's client meeting, I can easily forget about some of those old receivables. Amicus is going to bring them to my attention. And as you can see, again, when my mouse goes over it, it's going to help me with my old accounts receivable. Let's just quickly flip to something like my calendar and get a look at it. It's a very graphical, visual calendar with full drag and drop capabilities. This is a thorough, professional calendar. It can do everything your Outlook calendar can do. In fact, this is your Outlook calendar because Amicus Attorney Cloud Edition is unique in that we have built the back end of Outlook into the back end of Amicus Cloud. So you are not just linking or syncing in any way, connecting like that to Outlook, you are actually sharing the same data with Outlook. So anything in your Outlook calendar is in Amicus Cloud and vice versa, without a link, without a need to run a synchronization. And that's not just limited to Outlook. If you use a Macintosh, the same thing is true of the Mac calendar program. If you use an iPad, the calendar program on that. If you use an iPhone, the calendar program on that, and so on. So this calendar is your professional calendar on any device you choose to use, and it's here in the Amicus Cloud. All right, down here in the lower left corner, you can see I have a series of reminders. So every once in a while, you'll see this refresh, and Amicus Cloud will bring to my attention, again, things that might need to be paid attention to in my practice. So for example, I have six unread emails. I click on that, and it brings me up to my email. Please take a look at this from a practice management point of view and a cloud point of view. What you're looking at here is your email. This is, again, just like a, with the calendar, this is not some kind of synchronization. This is not some kind of link. I didn't have to forward these emails from somewhere else to get them into my practice management system. Outlook's email backend, which is called Microsoft Exchange, is built right into Amicus Cloud. So this is my live email. So whether I'm using an iPhone or other smartphone and just using my thumbs to type an email from my phone, instantly when I send that email, it's here in Amicus Cloud. Whether I use Mac Mail, whether I use Outlook, whatever device I use for my email, if I can keep using that or I can use this because this is also a full email client. I can send and receive emails. I can do everything I could in Outlook with my emails here or in Outlook or both which gives me the freedom to work the way I want to. But there is a really important distinction between those other mail programs and Amicus Cloud. We've got who it's from, the subject matter, those are pretty standard. But notice right here, these are the client matter files that any given email relates to. You'll notice that some of their hyperlinks, I can go look at the file. Some of these are bold emails which haven't even been opened yet, but Amicus learns and recognizes who is working on what file with me, who's a client, and it automatically organizes my email for me. So there's a benefit to practice management. Yes, I could use Outlook, um, but if I'm using Amicus Cloud, it's going to organize all of those on a client matter basis. Notice this column as well, time question mark. So here, it's keeping track of whether or not I've done a time entry on any email. There's very few lawyers I've ever spoken to who will swear that every day, every billable email they send to receive they managed to do a time entry for. So every day, that means they're losing money on emails they're doing, but forgetting about. With a program like Amicus Cloud, that can't happen. It shows you where you've done a time entry and where you haven't. And here's one where the word done isn't there, so I'll just click this button, do a time entry. And there, you'll see email correspondence with Janet Bailey, all done. All I had to do was click that button, and you'll notice in the background now, it shows that that was done. All right, let's flip quickly into my client matter files, which in so many ways are the core of my practice. Here's a list of all my files. If I want to see the Bailey retickling matter, I just click on it, and here's all the details about the files. The people involved on the file with me, and again, notice that across the top, all of the different aspects of information I can work with on the file. So for example, email. Here again is a huge benefit of having a totally integrated email system because all of the emails I or anybody at my firm send or receive on daily recipients 
will appear here without us having to work on it, so we can keep track of those on a file-by-file -file basis or document. So here what I'm seeing is all of the documents relating to the Bailey Recapling Matter. If I double-click one, I can see more details about it, some notes I've made about it, and notice there's version control, so I can see each different version of this document as it's created. I want to see it, I click on it, and it's going to open up. Um, this document is stored in a totally encrypted way in the cloud for me. So uh, whatever device I'm using, I could be using an iPad, I could be using my home computer, I could be anywhere, and I have access to all of my documents. And there's uh, the Bailey Reed Kipling uh, publishing contract. So phenomenally powerful, and when we talk about mobility and flexibility, ability to use different devices and so on, there's a fantastic example of how you can go virtually paperless and practice law on a tablet if you have a cloud solution. So very, very powerful. All right, let's go back to our home screen for a second. We saw at the beginning of looking at this product these tiles that are very helpful. And this one here is really interesting. You have six recent activities with those time entries. So when I click on that, it takes me to my time sheet and it brings up the time entry assistant. I love this screen. Have a look. It says the list below shows all activities on files for the last few days for which there's no identified time entry. So it's gone through my whole practice, some phone calls I had, an appointment that I had, um, more phone calls, emails that I've had. So anything that I'm doing in my practice, from phone calls to emails to meetings to tasks to anything else like that, um, Mekis is keeping track for me if I remember to build for them. And when I log in, it tells me if I've forgotten any. And as you can see, with one click, uh, I did it. Um, the billing works in a similar way. Now, one of the things about cloud applications is a lot of firms say, well, I'm willing to organize my practice on the cloud, but I want my bills really close to home. So they use desktop billing applications, for instance, time slips or QuickBooks. Um, one of the great things about a product like Amicus Cloud is you have the choice. You can work with your time slips, you can link to your QuickBooks, or you can use the built-in time and billing uh, for a variety of things, including, for example, there's a collection assistant works very much like that time entry assistant but in this case, it's showing me all the matters for which no payment has been received in the last month. It shows me the balance and when the client last paid. A wide variety of powerful practice management tools. So that's an example of what cloud practice management can do for you and how it works and the types of features. Pretty powerful uh, coordination and management of your practice all through an iPad or browser anywhere, anytime. We spoke briefly about email integration. It's so important. If you don't have email in your practice management, you're not managing your practice. Only Amicus Cloud can do that for you. It's also really important to be able to use any device. I mean, you're not going to replace your smartphone. It's got built-in calendars and so on, um, or your tablet. They all have fantastic built-in applications, and it's critical in cloud mobility to be able to use any of those built-in applications and have it just appear in your cloud. You can cloud can do that. All right, let's talk about how you get started and what you need to look at, and we're going to get into the ethical concerns as well. To get started, I'm going to give you a list of various vendors. Obviously, I'm from Amicus. I'm going to tell you about that or have told you about that, but there's many. I'll give you a list. Go to their website. Read their websites. Evaluate them for yourselves. Um, lawyers are sophisticated consumers. You need to read and think about it. And most importantly, read the terms of service. The terms of service are the contract between you and the service provider. They are wildly different between different cloud applications. And it's really important when we come to the ethical and security concerns that you're confident the terms of service protect you and your legal duty. Most, if not all of them, offer free trials. Take advantage. Find out how data conversion can happen. Because if the product looks good, but you start out with a blank sheet, it's a lot more work than if they can convert your existing data from whatever format into it. And most importantly, ask lots of questions. Um, I'm going to help you with a big list of questions you could be asking. Um, and there's no one size fits all here. What's best for you? Evaluate it for itself, yourself. Different law firms are going to have different needs and different solutions will be better for them. Right. As I mentioned, how you get your data into the cloud is very important. All right, here's the list I promised to you. 
Now, what I did is I've taken these off the vendor's website to, to their posted prices. I rounded it up to the nearest dollar. For example, on Visa's Cloud, it's $34.95. It's not really $35. But for simplicity of comparison, I've rounded them all up to the nearest dollar. These are their public monthly per user per month subscription costs. And uh, you know, I apologize if I've left any out, but that it's a big list as it is. You have lots of choices and lots of things you can research. All right, let's talk about security because whenever I talk to lawyers about the cloud, security is the number one thing they ask about because we attorneys have an ethical duty to maintain our client's confidentiality. And unfortunately, no data anywhere on the cloud can be said to be 100% secure. So. Does that mean you can never put data in the cloud? No, it does not. Because data isn't perfectly secure in your office either. Somebody can get into your office with a crowbar, and it takes a whole lot more than a crowbar to get into heavily encrypted data centers. Um, of course, some servers are more secure than others. Um, there are impregnable server farms which have incredible security. For instance, Amicus Cloud uses what's called the Microsoft Azure platform. It's built by Microsoft. They're virtually tank proof secure data centers that are almost impossible to get into and they're so secure that organizations like NASA, Boeing, Lockheed, Lockheed, VeriSign, they all use Microsoft Azure because of its incredible security. Now, I don't think there's any law firm out there that could say that it, its network or any lawyer's laptop is meeting the same standards of security as NASA or Boeing has. So I think that it's pretty safe to say Microsoft Azure meets your client confidentiality security requirements. Um, not all of them do, and that's something you need to look into as you're working on it. Um, all right, what have the state bars said about it? Um, because a lot of them have issued ethics opinions about whether or not lawyers can can use cloud data storage. They're for a long time, there were no reports on this, and then over the past couple of years, um, half a dozen or a dozen state bars have issued opinions. The most recent one I'm aware of comes from the Massachusetts State Bar, and I'll read it to you. Their opinion is that a lawyer generally may store and synchronize electronic work files containing confidential client information across different platforms and devices using an internet-based storage solution. So long as the lawyer undertakes reasonable efforts to ensure that the provider's terms of use and data privacy policies, practices, and procedures are compatible with the lawyer's professional obligations, including the obligation to protect confidential client information. So that's the key point. It's okay, but it's up to you. You have a duty to investigate any cloud service you use and make sure um, that it meets the guidelines. Um, and that's easier said than done. There's a couple of uh, quick, easy ones we can address. Public hotspots, and by that I mean free Wi-Fi at places like Starbucks or you know a hotel lobby or other such places. Very simply put, don't use it. They're very easily hacked. Once a hacker can copy your keystrokes, if you're logging in to a secure website but through a public hotspot, the hacker can get your URL and your password, and then everything is available to that hacker. The California State Bar has actually given an opinion which says it is a breach of ethics to use a public hotspot to access client confidential data. So simply put, don't do it. Another huge question is, do you have a right to privacy for your data? Um, and that comes back to the terms of service. Uh, I won't take the time now to read them, but if you read the Gmail terms of service, um, no, you don't have a right to privacy uh, of your data. They retain the right to use your data for things like advertising and other such things. You don't want that. Um, in today's news alone, um, there's a Facebook uh, company that they bought that's called, I um, uh, forget what it's called, but it's a company uh, uh, that does the photo sharing that Facebook just bought. And in today's news, they've changed the terms of service, and they're now saying that when you share photos through them, um, they can use those photos for advertising. Well, that's scary. Obviously, legal. Cloud applications don't go anywhere near that, um, but it means when you're looking at public cloud solutions like Facebook, like Gmail, um, you have to read those terms of service very, very carefully. Who else besides yourself has access to the data? Um, 
and most importantly, do you have the competency uh, to deal with it? If, if you don't, don't go near it. Uh, another big issue relating to this is if you're relying on the cloud to practice law, what happens if your internet is not available? You're either somewhere physically where you can't do it, or you can't do it safely, or your internet service provider goes down. Can you work offline? Yes, with some products like Amicus Cloud, but no with others, and you have to be very careful about that. Another aspect of this is to say, can I get the advantages of the cloud, but not have to take any security risks or ethics risks by using the cloud? And the answer to that is yes, you can. Uh, you don't have to go to the cloud to be able to use it through a browser or to use your private network data through a browser. Again, that's going to depend on the vendor. So, for example, Amicus Attorney Premium in 2013 has a full browser access, gives you the advantage of the cloud, uh, but uh, doesn't store anything in the cloud. So the best of both worlds is possible. All right, I've got a, just a few minutes left, and I want to take you through a list of questions that you should be asking any cloud vendor uh, before you um, uh, sign up or start to use them really for anything, but most particularly for crime confidential information. Who are they? That seems obvious, but you know, where are they located? How reliable are they? How much experience do they have? How stable is the business? Are they a startup company trying to make a buck, or are they committed to you and your practice and have been around long enough uh, to show that they're going to be around later when you need them? Encryption. Data when it's stored should be encrypted. Data when it's transmitted should be encrypted. There are various levels of encryption. Uh, the highest level in use on the Internet typically is 256-bit. That's what banks use when you transmit financial data back and forth. You want to make sure you've got 256-bit encryption on all transmission. That means that it comes back and forth. Nobody can snip at it, as it's called, capture some packets, and decrypt your data. How often do they do backups for you? Some are very proud that they do three backups a day. Um, in Amicus Cloud, we do about six backups a second for you. Uh, it's really important uh, that your data be backed up constantly. Server redundancy. That's back to the concept of, OK, if your stuff's stored on a computer, all computers can fail at some time. Is there another computer on standby that, it, that can cut in immediately and help uh, take over the load so that you don't have to stop practicing law. Again, in Amicus Cloud, there's always six servers on standby. Um, and others maybe not the same. Uptime guarantees. Will they promise you that, um, that your data will be always available at what percentage of time? You want to get 99.99% because practicing law shouldn't be waiting for somebody else to fix their server. Other really important things. Do you get a separate database? Again, there's two ways to store information in a big database in the cloud. You could have one giant database, and then all law firms' data and all their prime confidential stuff goes into the same logical database on a big server. Um, the problem with that is that if, for any reason, in any way, that A got corrupted, then there could be cross-pollution of data. You could start reading by accident some other law firm's data, or vice versa. or if for some reason there was a legal seizure of that database, your stuff could innocently be dragged along with the seizure. You don't want to be in a mingled database. You want to make sure that your data is in a separate database. How do you get your data in? We've touched on that before. Equally important, though, is how do you get your data out? You don't want to be locked into a system. You want to use and take advantage of the system. As soon as you don't like it anymore, you want to be able to walk and take all your data with you. Really importantly, does the vendor make any claim to your data? As we saw with Gmail and Facebook and others, some cloud vendors do. And then things like training, is that available? And how much disruption will it cause to my current staff uh, to change to this cloud solution? There's more that you need to think about and ask about. Um, if some third party can get or can serve the host of your database with a subpoena, can they discover it? What privacy policies do they have in place to ensure that nobody can see it but you? Um, and what will they do for you uh, if you decide to quit? And in what format will they give you your data back? Offline, we mentioned. So a wide variety of important questions that you need to be asking a cloud vendor. You need to think through all of this, read about it, think about it, 
up and decide whether or not the cloud is right for you. Hope you've seen that there are many advantages and many disadvantages both ways. Um, you know, we as a vendor of practice management solutions, we've been around for almost 20 years. We offer both desktop and cloud. We recognize that no, neither approach is necessarily better than the others. They're just different for different people. One of the things we've done on our website, amicus-cloud.com, is we have a section on why cloud and a section there, legal ethics in the cloud. So if you want to dive deeper and read for yourself into the kinds of things I've been talking about, everything from security to ethics opinions and everything else, go to that page on legal ethics in the cloud. It has dozens of links to State Bar and other websites, some very well-written articles from leaders around the world on this subject. Um, and please use it as a resource. As I say, we're not wedded to the cloud. We have a fantastic cloud product, but also fantastic desktop product. And you need to make that professional decision based on your own research. We just tried to make it a little easier for you. So that's my half hour. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I wish I could talk to all of you in person. I can't, but I hope by now that some of you have been sending in some questions to Josh, uh, and Josh will ask them for me. Josh, Thank over you. to you. Thank you. Yeah, we have a lot of great questions. I'll, we have several that are similar, and I'll just answer really quickly, which is uh, about seeing a, a repeat of the presentation. And so I'll just, I'll just emphasize that we did record this, and we will be posting a recording of the entire presentation uh, online uh, within the next couple days. And we'll send out a link to that to everybody who registered. So uh, if there's anything that you missed or anything you'd like to, to watch a second time, um, we will certainly share that. Uh, so going to the questions, uh, one of the first questions we had was whether or not there are some cloud services uh, that are more secure than others? I think you touched on that a little bit, but um, would you like to expand on that? Sure. Um, for example, um, Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox is a, what's called a public cloud data storage system. It's an incredibly convenient little utility, and I'm sure many of you have tried it and played with it sort of on a personal level. Great way to share documents or whatever with your family, um, but it's not very secure. Uh, and uh, for, for instance, they've had about five security incidents in the past two years where at various times all documents from all uh, subscribers to Dropbox could have been available to any other subscriber. Um, it, the, the passcode to Dropbox is simply a little file on your hard disk, so anybody who can hack onto your hard disk and get that little file can have all the rights you have. Um, and uh, almost any employee of Dropbox uh, at various times would have access to any of your documents as well. Um, those are, and there's more. Uh, in fact, I don't know if any of you use LinkedIn, but there's an entire discussion forum on this subject where there's some terrific posts. And really, I didn't see one post on that discussion forum where any practicing attorney would dare recommend to another practicing attorney that they put uh, crime confidential documents on Dropbox. Um, but it's so convenient. Um, and it's so tempting for uh, people to do that. So that's the kind of thing you need to look at. And that's a public cloud system. It's not meant for attorneys. It's a really good system, but it's not meant for attorneys. In contrast, something like Amicus Cloud, your documents are 256-bit encrypted. No one can read them. No one, including us, uh, can read them other than you. So which leads to another thing, don't lose your password. Your password has to be strong, um, much stronger than the typical thing you might log into Gmail with. Um, and don't lose it because it is the key uh, to getting at your information. Okay. Uh, one of the next questions was uh, that you mentioned that there are advantages to cloud computing in terms of lower cost, but also disadvantages that it's more expensive. Could you just clarify that? Sure. Um, I know it's, it sounds <laughs> like a contradiction. It's lower cost up front. Uh, for example, with Amicus Cloud, you pay $35 a month. Well, your first $35, you go, wow, <laughs> couldn't be much less expensive. I mean, about the price of a good bottle of wine. Um, but uh, you pay it next month, and you pay it next month, and you pay it next month. So um, Amicus Attorney Small Firm is like $400. So $400 is a lot more than $35. But over the course of three years, um, $35 a month is more expensive. Um, and it, it's that simple. On the other hand, um, you're responsible for keeping your desktop computer going, updating Windows or whatever else needs to be done on it, 
And with a uh, cloud application, you just need a browser to log into. So it's more expensive from a cash out the door basis. Uh, is it less expensive or about the same over time if you can factor in all sorts of unrelated costs? Maybe. Um, I don't think so. I think you'll find cloud is a bit more expensive, but it's a convenience that's worth it. Okay. Uh, can you address who owns the data when it's put in the cloud? Well, that depends on the terms of service. So, for example, in the Amica Cloud Terms of Service, they very explicitly say that you, the subscriber, and only you, the subscriber, own the data, and we make no claim to it whatsoever. However, as I've said, in other terms of service, ranging from that Facebook um, uh, photo sharing application to uh, Gmail, um, they make claims to the data. So uh, that's why, as attorneys, uh, it's incumbent on you to read the terms of service before putting client information into any cloud provider. Okay. Uh, if you decide to discontinue a relationship with a cloud vendor, uh, what's the, like, the, the best method for data conversion and migration? Well, again, that's going to depend on you and what your vendor offers. So in the case of uh, Amicus Cloud, we offer it to you in several different formats depending on how you want to get it out. So you can get it out in anything ranging from a report to what's called a, a CSV file, which is a standard data import-export file method, to an Excel spreadsheet, up to a SQL database, because we actually do store all of Amicus Cloud's data in uh, your private SQL database, and we'll give you that database. So it's up to you which format you want it in, and, and different firms are going to want it in different ways. Okay. Uh, sort of a related question. Um, could you address conversion of uh, data from Time Matters, I think, to Amicus Cloud? Well, uh, sure, because we can, we can totally do that. We have a full conversion. We'll get your client file relationships, cross-references. Um, if there's a place for it in Amicus Cloud, now remember, Time Matters is a big desktop application like Amicus Attorney. Um, Amicus Cloud is a cloud application. There isn't a 100% uh, equivalency. They don't all have exactly the same fields and do exactly the same thing. But wherever there is an equivalency, we'd have a full and complete conversion. We have customers today in Amicus Cloud who were using Time Matters a few months ago, and they took all their data with them. Okay. Uh, we have a specific Amicus question. Is Amicus Cloud integrated with Amicus Accounting? Uh, no, it is not. It is integrated. It has full built-in um, time and billing and collections and trust, as you may have seen in my very flying demo there, and it has a dynamic integration with QuickBooks for the accounting side of things. Uh, to use any or to use Amicus Cloud, is there any requirement to use uh, for the email client portion? But for example, if the company's email is a private web-based uh, email, will Amicus Sync uh, work with the private web-based email? Um, I'm not sure what's meant by a private web-based email system because there has to be some application running an email system. What the requirement is for Amicus Cloud to integrate email is there must be an Exchange server somewhere. So Exchange is the world's leading email server. Sort of 90% of all businesses out there use Exchange for their email. So the odds are any email system we're speaking of here does have Exchange built into it somehow. And then if you've got that, no problem. We just connect to it. So any law firm that ha already has Exchange, we just connect to it. There's no conversion or anything involved, we just connect to what's there. If, however, the firm does not use Exchange, for instance, maybe they use Hotmail, um, well, of course, it's probably time to get off of Hotmail, um, and we will supply Exchange. Okay. Uh, what's the general level of satisfaction uh, for law firms that have converted to cloud computing? And, and do you have any idea what percentage stay with cloud computing or how many revert back to a, a traditional software platform? That's a really interesting question, Josh. And remembering that we're speaking about a wide variety of different types of applications. So if you're talking about something simple and trivial, like, for instance, iCloud for coordinating your iPhone with your iPad, the level of satisfaction is very high. Um, 
If you're talking about an application that a law firm has been using for a long time and then tries to switch, that's going to depend on the law firm. Uh, some, some firms are you know, wildly ecstatic about the mobility and freedom it gives them, and others say, yeah, this is fantastic, but it can only do a third of what I could do before with my desktop system, and is that uh, enough for me? Um, so it, it really depends on what you're looking to get out of it. Uh, I think that very, very often firms who've never, for example, to speak of practice management, firms that have never had any other form of practice management simply love the cloud. It's wonderful. Firms who've had other good practice management, it'll depend on what they were using in that practice management when they switch, uh, whether it's the right thing for them or not. And that's where the free trials and so on are so important so that people can see that for themselves before they make a leap. Okay. Uh, are there any particular web browsers that are better for cloud computing or that are more secure? Uh, you, you need a modern web browser. So, for example, with Internet Explorer, they're just about to release uh, IE10. You really should have IE10 in the future for cloud computing because it is much better than IE9, which is the currently shipping version. Um, the, the latest version of Safari on the Mac, uh, Firefox, and so on, um, you just need one of the modern ones. They're all good, and I've spoken to people who swear by one or the other. Um, I, I have no personal preference, and sometimes I, I have trouble seeing where people are really swearing by the one or the other. But it must be very modern to support the modern uh, technique. Gotcha. Uh, There's a list there... on our website. Okay. Are there any known issues with Android uh, and Amicus in general? Uh, no, none at all. Okay. Would Amicus Cloud replace time slips as well as time matters? Is it the same functionality? Yes. Okay. It, by the way, it can work with time slips. So we have customers who are using Amicus Cloud for the cloud side of things, and then they're doing their bills through time slips on their desktop. Or you can replace both. And we have a question. If you if you want to back up your own data that's in the cloud, uh, what is the best method? Uh, back to those uh, CSV files I spoke of. That's probably the best method uh, of doing it. Okay. So you can get those without leaving. Uh, you know, but again, I'm I'm not really sure why you would want to, uh, given the backup procedures in place. But our data centers are run by Microsoft, and they're so good. I'm not sure anybody manually could, could beat Microsoft. All right. Well, that's the last of the questions we have here. If there's any, any last questions, get them in right now. Looks like that's it. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ron. I think those were some, that was a great presentation, some great questions as well. Um, and thank you, everybody, again, for attending. Uh, we'll be putting the video online in the next couple of days, as I said, and we'll also be sending out an email uh, with a link to that. Um, and uh, actually, we do have one last question, which is, uh, what happens when the Internet goes out? <laughs> I, think, I know you addressed yeah. that a little bit, but... <laughs> I, I did a little bit. And, and remember, there's various ways that the Internet can go out. Uh, and for instance, you can just be out of range of any Internet-enabled device. Um, but there, it depends on the system you're using. Some, in fact, many cloud applications, well, that's it. You're out of luck until you can next connect because simply everything's in a browser. Amicus has that unique advantage of so much of your data is actually going to be co-resident in uh, Outlook, in Mac Mail, Mac Calendar, in your iPhone's calendar, your iPhone's reminders list, and so on, so that virtually all of it, well, not all of it, but a huge percentage of it, um, is there resident in those devices, and you can use it offline until you connect, connect. And when you do connect, any and all changes you made will be automatically applied. All right. Well, we will send out a link to uh, not just the video, but we'll include some other links as well for additional information uh, so that you can get the, so you can go and uh, ask additional questions if you have them or, uh, or look up the information on the website. Uh, and we want to thank sure. you all again for attending, and, and thank you, Ron, for coming and presenting for our audience today. Thank you, Josh. It's been a pleasure.